Howdy folks, Merry Christmas, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it, amen. Wow, it's still Christmas, you know. Uh, Christmas isn't only one night. Actually, there's 12 days of Christmas and this being uh, the first Sunday of Christmas. So welcome to Zion here in beautiful Chelsea, Michigan. We are thankful that you're tuning in. I just wanna give a shout out to everybody that made Christmas Eve such a, um, a wonderful evening. We had great music. We were able to connect all over the world and we're just grateful and thankful that we were able to take the gospel, the good news of Jesus, literally all over the world. So a welcome. We're going to uh, just get started here in a few minutes. We are doing a uh, more of a traditional kind of a worship service. It's called Lessons and Carols and you will hear the story of God's redemption beginning way back in the creation story, and then, of course, uh, the gift of a Savior. Uh, and so you'll hear that with some really good music, but we're just grateful that you are here. Grab your cup of coffee, and uh, I'm going to get all dressed up, ready to go. And once again, God bless, and Merry Christmas. Thanks for being with us. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. 
we have beheld Christ's glory, glory as the only Son of the Father. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. In the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled us with the new light of the word who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all we do through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the lessons. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. You, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler 
in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Therefore he shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and this one shall be peace. A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you Your baby boy would give sight to a 
from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the flocks, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. For unto you in the city of David is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that had taken place, which the Lord had made known to us. So they went with haste. And they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger.
reading from Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to, be, to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Chapter 2, beginning at the 21st verse. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. 
This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Here ends the reading.
peace of the Lord be with you always. And once again, Merry Christmas. Before we uh, prepare our hearts for communion, I just want to thank you for a spectacular Christmas Eve. Um, you know, we were able to connect with so many people. And it's because of your love and your support. And again, I want to thank you for your generosity here. And as you know, uh, the gifts that we give of our time, our talent, our possessions, uh, they really impact and change lives. It gives us an opportunity to share the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ, not only here locally, but throughout the world as well. So again, uh, thank you for your giving. And uh, if you'd like to give today, you can do it via um, Facebook, or you can go on our website, or you can mail it here directly to Zion Lutheran Church here in Chelsea, Michigan, or you can drop it off here at the church. But we're just thankful for your giving. And remember, the Lord says that he likes a giver that has a joyful heart. So remember, it's joyful to be able to give. Let us prepare our hearts for communion. Good and gracious God, we thank you so much for this day. And we thank you for this season of Christmas, reminding us that you love us so much that you gave all of us the gift of a Savior, and that he is there to meet us wherever that need might be. Thank you for giving us that hope and joy and love and peace that is Christmas. Thank you for reminding us, God, of your faithfulness and for the call for us to be light in this darkness. As we gather here around this table, let us be mindful that you come to us in this bread and in this wine as it becomes for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, as we gather around this table, let us be mindful that we can have that intimate relationship with you, not only through this meal, but through our prayers. And thank you for teaching us how to pray. And together we pray that prayer that you taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with communion. Remember that though we might not be here in person, I know we are virtual. But remember the one thing that binds us together as the body of Christ is Jesus, and he is present there with us. We continue with communion.
having been fed with Christ's meal, we pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. 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 And brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. As Mary was the bearer of Jesus made flesh, may you go in peace to carry the good news of Jesus Christ to all the world. Amen.